In my last video, I was discussing how we can learn a lot about the layered architecture of networking, the network communication, how it functions, and the protocols that work in networking by using a packet capture program like Wireshark, a packet sniffer that will capture the traffic leaving our computer and coming into our computer. And then we can examine these protocols and how they work in layers according to a layered architecture, according to the TCP IP model which has these four layers, the application layer, transport layer, internet layer, and network access layer, and have protocols like HTTP and TCP and IPv4 and Ethernet work, in, uh, work when we send communications over the internet or over the network. Now, in the last video, basically what I did was is I started Wireshark and I captured some traffic I started my capture on my Wi-Fi network interface, and then I went to two websites. I went to linuxmint.com, and then I went to my own website, dalbergetti.com, which is just a simple page with a picture on it. And then I also FTP'd into my website and downloaded a file from my FTP server. Then I opened the program PuTTY, and I did a Telnet connection, and I saw an ASCII animation hosted at towel.blinkandlights.nl, which is pretty old school, kind of cool. And then I stopped my Wireshark capture. I saved the capture as a .pcapng file so that I could examine it later and maybe share the file with my students. And then we could look at see how these protocols work. So that's where we're at now. So now what I can do is I've got Wireshark here. And I have my packet capture. Here's the file. I've opened it up. And I made it some small adjustments to the Wireshark interface, I went to view and changed the time display format from seconds since beginning of capture to show the date and time of the day. Or if I just wanna see the time of the day, I could do this and now I have a timestamp for all of the frames that were captured. And each line here shows a frame or packet uh, the packet's there, but it's inside of the frame. So these are actual, each line is a different frame. And inside the frame, there's a packet. And then we can see, we can examine each, each of these frames. Another thing that I did was, is I decided to resolve the IP addresses to domain names wherever possible, or to basically the host names wherever possible. And to do that, you can go to Edit, Preferences, and under Name Resolution, click or check mark resolve network IP addresses. So instead of just seeing the source and destination IP address, it says source 192.168.8 and then the host name that is resolved to the IP address or that resolves from the IP address. So, um, all right, so let's get started. So we've got um, this file open. And the first thing I wanna look at is I wanna discover some statistics about this packet capture. So let's start by looking at some statistics. So the first thing is, now we should expect to see HTTP, FTP, and Telnet in this packet capture. However, you'll see there's a lot of other protocols at work when we communicate across the network or across the internet. You can see here DNS, ICMP, which is internet messaging protocol. You can see TCP, you can see TLS. This is secure communications across TLS. And then there's a bunch of protocols at work here, not just those. Um, you can see NetBIOS name server, you can see address resolution protocol. There's a lot of protocols that are, that are at work. But if we wanna see kind of a hierarchy of it, we can go to statistics and go to protocol hierarchy, and we can see all of the protocols and how many packets there were and the percentage of communications. So I'm going to collapse some of these so we can kind of collapse it and see. So we have here, um, first of all, we're dealing with frames, okay? These are ethernet frames that we're dealing with because this is an ethernet network on my home network. It's a wireless ethernet. And then, turns out, I was using IPv6 and IPv4. However, we can see that as far as IPv6 was going, that was only 0.7% of the packets being sent. So 98.2% of the packets being sent from my computer were IPv4 packets. And then 1% was address resolution protocol, which is used to resolve MAC addresses from uh, IP addresses on the network when you're delivering uh, a frame to a MAC address on the network. And so delivering a, 
let's say a frame from my computer to my wireless router then to go out onto the internet or from my computer to another ethernet address on my local network okay so if we if we want to see a little bit more about these protocols then we could open up ipv4 and we could see that at layer four at the transport layer there's udp packets which made up 29 percent of the communication and then tcp packets which made up 68.3% of the communication. Now, I did this activity again in my class, and in my class, I did the same type of thing. I visited, I, I did a packet capture, except I was running Zoom video conferencing with my students. And instead of picking up 5,000 packets, it picked up 50,000 packets. And then the majority of the packets were UDP packets because Zoom uses UDP for video conferencing. But when I did this packet capture, I wasn't doing video conferencing. So you can see it's just only 29% was UDP and TCP communications made up 68%. So also you can see here 0.1% of the communication was internet messages. Uh, ICMP is the uh, internet control messaging protocol of the internet that's used to send oftentimes uh, informational and error messages over the internet. If we open up this TCP, we should see some more stuff here. We can see there's the TLS transport layer security. 10% of the packets were using TLS. Well, I was, I was visiting some, some secure websites as well. I, even though maybe it wasn't open, I use, let's say Gmail and Google Docs and those services are running in the background are always communicating out to Google. So that's part of it. 4% was Telnet. You can see here, this is something interesting, a malformed packet. What was that? So this should cause uh, interest. This could, this could be a problem or it could be, this is unusual to see a malformed packet. I wonder what that was. Then HTTP, these are the websites that I visited, which made up 0.8% um, you know, of the packets. You can see 45 packets. And then you can see here that there was a JPEG file that was downloaded from the HTTP protocol. Uh, there was some text and there was some uh, markup language going on. Then there's the FTP data when I did the FTP and there was some text data from the FTP communication. And you can see here some, some other things here. So there was also an Apache JSERV protocol that was being used. Now that's just under IPv4. Under IPv6, you can see that under UDP, there was some multicast domain name system going on, some multicasting, and the link local multicast name resolution. So it looks like probably my computer using IPv6 was just making, just you know, doing a slight uh, multicast out to the network to see who was out there. And then we can learn more about that in a minute here. Okay, so I'll close that and I'll look at some more statistics. I could see more statistics here. So another statistic, that was protocol hierarchy, is the endpoints that we're communicating. Now, if we open up the endpoints, we can see all of the endpoints, means the source and the destinations, the source and destination endpoints. And we can see at ethernet level, these are the MAC addresses at the data link layer that we're talking, and then the IPv4 addresses here. And the other thing I can do is, is I can say, well, wait a minute, these MAC addresses, whose are these? Whose Ethernet NICs are these? Well, I can click on name resolution here, and then I can get a better idea. So it looks like this was an Amazon device. Maybe this was an Alexa type device, like an, an, like an Echo. And then this was a multicast, multicast. Here's my wireless router, Cisco Meraki wireless router. It looks like that did a, a large majority of the communication was my router. And then this Intel Core 427089, Looks like this did another majority of the communication. Well, this is probably the MAC address of my computer. And if I open up a command prompt and I do an IP config, we could see that, yep, this is my MAC address, 427089 with an Intel uh, type uh, you know, network interface, Ethernet interface. And then you can see some other devices here. Vizio, maybe that's a TV or something. Another Amazon device, things like that. Um, just to prove it that this is my NIC here, I can open up that command prompt. And what I'll do is, is I'll put in a command here, ipconfig slash all. 
And we look here, we're interested in the physical address right here, and you can see there's 427089. And then 48F17F is uh, identifies it as an Intel Core Ethernet network interface. And then this is my individual computer's wireless network interface, wireless Ethernet. So my wireless card, 427089. Now, we can see it right there, 427089. These are the IPv4 addresses of the endpoints. And we can see the names have been resolved because I clicked on name resolution and we can see all of these different places that my computer was communicating with. I thought I only went to two websites. I went to Linux Mint and I went to dalbergetti.com and I also went to this site right here for the Telnet connection. But as you can see, there's a lot more addresses here. Well, these are multicast addresses. These are like broadcast, but they're multicast. But you can see I was going to Google APIs. And Google APIs is used because if you're using, let's say, I don't know, Google Drive or Gmail, you're probably going to Google APIs. And then um, to make the secure communications using all of uh, the services that go along with Gmail and things like that. And then you've got here uh, open DNS, DNS resolvers, Anyway, all of these accounts here, open authentication at Google APIs, uh, Linux Mint, which I went to, and at some place in here should be my my at my website. There it is, dalbergetti.com. So I went there too. Now, if I want to say, okay, these are a lot of sites, but who was doing the most talking? Then I could look at, let's say, how many packets, right? How many packets? Well, five thousand packets from my computer, uh, nine hundred and seventy-eight packets to Google. 860 packets to Linux Mint, uh, to my website was 190 packets. Um, here's that Telnet connection, 489 packets. That was that ASCII animation that we saw. But you can see here, it looks like this is Microsoft Edge. This one I was curious about, gvt1.com. This is Google Dictionary Services or Chrome. This is my Chrome web browser talking to dictionary services. Now, how did I learn about that? Well, I was curious, so I opened up Google and I asked, who is this host? Well, I don't know who this host is, who is it? And then I found this um, answer here and basically it was saying something about dictionary services, it's Chrome talking out, uh, GVT1, and so I said, okay, that explains it. I was using Google Chrome and maybe there's some service going on behind the scenes that it uses. Another one that I was curious about, looking at those end devices, was this address right, where is it? There was an address, here it was, 13107.18.11. I was curious as to who that was. So I also did, who is this address? And when I looked it up, I found out it was basically um, Microsoft Azure, it's one of the services related to Microsoft. So after doing a quick search, I figured that out. So that kind of explains that. Then along those lines, I also, because I was curious about what was happening, is I went over to IPv6 and there is some IPv6 communications happening. So this, right, 42 packets, at this, this is a link local address, IPv6. This is a host address. This is an, an endpoint. So I was like, who is this? Well, it's probably my computer. Well, let's verify that. So we open up the command prompt, do the IP config all, and you can see there it is, link local IPv6 address, FE80, and then we can see here 9D0D. Well, that's me right there. So that's me communicating. And then you can see I was multicasting. So these are multicasts. We know these are multicasts because of FF02 colon colon FB and FF02 colon one colon three. So I thought, well, what, what's that doing? What is my computer doing trying to communicate with these addresses? Well, you could just look it up. So this is um, FF02 FB. And you can see here is, is, a, is an IPv6 address multicast. Well, what's it doing? Why is it, is it? What's it doing? This is actually, this is the Bonjour protocol. This is the Apple Bonjour protocol advertising its services. 
So it's a bonjour multicast, essentially. And then the other one was the IPv6, and I think it was 2.3, so I ended up on this website, and I wanted to look it up. So we, we just look it up, and there it is. FF02 colon one colon three, with all the zeros there. And this is a link local multicast name resolution. So now I know what my computer was doing related to IPv6. This was Bonjour Multicast Service, and this was a multicast name service um, trying to resolve names on the network. And then this is my address. So that tells me a little bit about what was happening on my computer. I can also go to statistics and look at the conversations that were happening. And once again, I can look at it Ethernet-wise, with name resolution. I can look at under IPv4 with name resolution, the conversations that were happening and who was doing the most talking and, and from where and to where. So from my computer to Google, there's that conversation. From Mint to me, there's that conversation. And this is address A and address B and the conversations and how many packets, how many bytes, right? What was the most data happening crossing, right? The most data that was actually crossing was from gvt1.com to my computer. So from this, this dictionary services right here to my computer. 